back at uh, Granite City Comic Con, uh, me and Mark, and we're just going to talk to uh, Paul Blake and Garrick. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, yeah, I'm, we're doing great. Thank you. How's the day going? The day here has been going very well. We've uh, we've got through half of it, and most of Aberdeen has been in to see us, and, uh, <laughs> and I think the, other the rest half are of... coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say the other half are coming tomorrow. Has it been has it been really busy for you guys today? Well, it has. Uh, it's a bit different. I came last year, and, and we were so crushed last year because it was millions of people sort of turning up, and I think just as many turned up today but because we're in a, a bigger venue we've, yeah. we've had a little bit more space and time yeah, yeah. which actually has been quite nice yeah oh brilliant that's good yeah, yeah, we you haven't seen a bit of the uh, the bay or the harbour or the <laughs> it's quite a sight yeah, yeah. Oh, well, we need a rename of the Aberdeen Bay Aberdeen Bay Aberdeen the Bay, Aberdeen yeah, Bay yeah. yes or the Corniche in fact <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously you guys are both obviously seen Star Wars um, Greedo and Biggs and I just wondered me and Mark were looking at there's a, there's a film you guys were in um, L Street 1976 yeah, yeah a documentary coming out on the the making of Star Wars but from the perspective of um, the lesser known characters I suppose uh, now, now, that, that's a phrase you have to be very careful with uh huh have the lesser known is not how we refer to ourselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, the Biggs and Greedo are very like they're very big in a to me from because I, I love Star Wars since I was a kid and I was I was always interested in the characters that weren't shown as much. I, then they got so much more in the expanded universe and being able to pick up on other stories to do them as well as far as the characters go. Um, I was wanting to ask you, Garrick, about that um, and the way Biggs has become because uh, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of this stuff, your scenes were originally cut from the original release, um, the stuff sort of around Tashi Station and things, um, which became infamous kind of later on. Um, but Biggs became such an interesting character, almost sort of mythological as far as the character goes. Uh, I was just wondering how you, I mean, of course, you, uh, you brought yourself to the character, but then it took off in another fashion. I was just wondering how... Well, it didn't take off from uh, the backstories. It was there in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the original book. There, quite a bit of the uh, uh, what we call the cut scene is there, and, and the essence of Biggs is there. Yeah. So um, what gave it a lot of flesh were, were the uh, comic books, uh, exactly. especially the Dark Horse series. Uh, the Dark Lighter series there, uh, um, and, the, and the drawings are so good. Uh, Doug Wheatley's uh, artwork in, in, in that series of comic books gave it a great deal of flesh. This, and, and the cards, too, uh, made Biggs uh, a very macho figure, a uh, very uh, uh, iconic-looking mm -hmm. images. Um, and so, all of all of the artwork, and and and, and the fact of being an X-wing pilot, who has such capabilities, but that was blown up. The 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 the, the games, the the games incorporated yeah. that. So Biggs has a pretty high rating. He can fly through the eye of a needle. He taught Luke. All of that it, it came with the ancillary products. Yes. I like like all that, but but I obviously didn't know it when I first did the of course the not, scenes. Yeah. The scene itself is a relatively simple buddy scene, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I remember that all your sequences leading leading up to that as being uh, they were pretty fast moving, weren't they? It was all in the hangar, and uh, was that right? Well, we, we, we the, the the scene in Tashi Station. Is, is again like just like uh, George's um, American Graffiti. It's sort of, and I think one of, that's one of the reasons George shied away from it hmm. because uh, uh, right, the yeah. atmosphere in Tashi was very much like the gang in American Graffiti. And uh, w but the camaraderie was there between yeah. George, uh, between Luke and myself, and and Deke. Uh, and fixer, mm -hmm. there's a sort of feeling that we we hang out together and have done for, for 
years. Yeah, well, right. I, have... that was, I think that was one of the charms of the early films, is that you were introduced to so many characters and people so quickly, and yet then they were suddenly gone. It was episodic, very episodic. Yeah. And you really were left with wanting more. And, yeah. uh, and actually, that's one of the attractions of uh, The Force Awakens, I think, too, is that, it, again, it's successful for its for mm. its episodic uh, nature, particularly with all the, the young cast. But I, re I do remember your sequences, Gary, and, and feeling excited that something was in the air about, you know, they were just about to take off, the pilots were all up for it, they were, you know, you, you saw a history there, which, mm, yeah. which was well, cool. Well, that's what everybody says. They, they see me come back into the hangar and they don't know why Luke is so pleased yeah, to see him. Part of the reason that he was, and I was, is that I'd been away doing another film uh, called The Bridge Too Far in, mm -hmm. in reality. And so suddenly we got together and, and the hug was real because mm. I hadn't seen much of Bark for a while and it was nice to be back with oh, him and the whole set. It's, cool. I'd been at war in Holland and then I come back to this and it really was a, <laughs> a nice happy day yeah. before we go off and get killed in, in the bar, <laughs> Yavin, Battle of Yavin. <laughs> Do you know, I was the only actor in England at the time who didn't do Bridge Too Far, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Every actor in England at the time was in it. Yeah. And I think, in retrospect, I was grateful that I wasn't in it because it was such hard work. Well, the it? Americans didn't have to uh, get militarized as much because the American army was deemed to be very sloppy and we didn't have to train for much. <laughs> but the Bridge English ac uh, actors had to train. Yeah. <laughs> so do you guys, like, did you meet on the set of... Did you know each other then? We didn't, not on not on the set, did we? Because I was in uh, much earlier uh, sequences, yeah, and yeah. Um, no, so we didn't know didn't each other time. until this. I mean, I, I, unlike some of the other actors, I mean, I'd, I'd worked actually with uh, Jeremy Bullock, and we we were in plays together, so I knew yeah. uh, Jem. But Gary and I hadn't hadn't worked together. Much to my chagrin, it would have been nice to to have done something with you. Been your lovely. company asked me to do something. I can't. I can't, I, I always thought at some point that we came across your company. Um, before and you asked me, might have asked me to may yeah, may well have been in the past but anyway we, we should didn't know but we didn't what do you guys think of the new star wars film just as a side note well i saw it recently actually not that recently but i yeah i saw it uh, a couple of months ago two or three months ago and kind of like everybody else and went to lo to my local cinema in dorchester mm -hmm. which incidentally is a fantastic cinema <laughs> and uh, and a, a private but uh, i was like everyone, I l absolutely loved it. Yeah. I was blown away with it. I, it was all the good things that I felt about the original three. I felt about The Force Awakens. And I loved the young cast. I mm -hmm. thought uh, Daisy Ridley was fabulous. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big fan of hers. I thought she held the movie together stunningly. Mm -hmm. uh, I Did liked um, most of the young cast. I thought were absolutely terrific. BB-8, I'm a big fan of BB-8. Yeah, BB so I want one. Superb. And, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, so it was cool. I loved it. Uh, well, I saw it at BAFTA, and the curious thing was at BAFTA, they're older, a lot of them are older, and, and they're very, some of them quite serious, because they're looking at it in terms of awards later on. Mm. And, and also, they didn't know Star Wars as well as, as I did. <laughs> and, and, and so a lot of the little references that were coming along, I was giggling away, and, <laughs> because there are so many pointers to New Hope. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, so I felt quite, uh, in a way, privileged that I, yeah, you guys don't know really the way that I know. Because <laughs> hmm. I'm normally in BAFTA, I feel very much a minor member. But uh, in that case, I was proud to be there as, yeah. a, as an old veteran. Nobody knew uh, my association, but I was proud to yeah. be there. Yeah. And I liked it enormously, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Um, the other thing I was going to ask as well was, um, so you hear, obviously, you know, Biggs is a, is a big character, but you've done in loads of other characters as well in you know, different movies, um, Spy Game, Mission Impossible. Um, what you mentioned Mission Impossible. The fact is, we were talking this morning about actors who, who can't remember their lines, and I was <laughs> working with, with an actor. Uh, bless his heart, I knew him for years ago, but he was going through a tough time. And so my long, I had a long spiel as a reporter, then put the mic in front of him. I was interviewing um, Tom Cruise's dad, and, um, and, and unfortunately, he couldn't get, get it out. And we were working on the, on, and the, on the front steps of the, of the um, Tate Museum, and they, they had to stop, and it never came out. So my name was on the film. I, I did all my spiel as a reporter. Fortunately, I could rem remember mine, but uh, the poor old actor, 
had trouble. And so that scene is totally... So my name is on there. That's a shame. But I'm not in the film. Mm. Now, this has not become a running theme of my life. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but there are... It's one of the two films in which something has been cut. Yeah. Oh, and except the recent one I was in, uh, the director said, wrote to me a card. And he said, I've had to cut uh, the first scene of Florence Foster Jenkins, which is just coming out next mm -hmm. week. And, and 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 he said I've had to cut that because I I've, I've taken the film, uh, starting it quite differently, and and I'm glad they did because it, the, mm. the, it was a quite a tough courtroom scene with Hugh Grant, oh, right. and uh, they started out much more gently, but my judge has had to go along with that courtroom scene. Mm -hmm. So there's three films. Please don't go into any more. <laughs> most, most of Garrick's career has been cut, so as long as we've established How that. I survive, well, I don't know. Yeah, because you, you, you've acted alongside quite a lot of you know, pretty awesome people, haven't you, like in scenes and stuff like that. Um, you've, you've been in a film with Steven Seagal? Oh, God, yes. I, I, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. He's awesome. And you got shot in it as well. Awesome. Now, Stephen, I, I, I like Stephen because we, he was going to kill me, uh -huh. as, as I am often killed. Uh -huh. um, he was going to kill me, but before he did, he said, uh, Garrick, are, are you wearing a box? I said, a box? Yeah, you're wearing a box. I'm going to kick you in the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not wearing a box, Stephen. <laughs> Oh, he said, okay, I'll be careful. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't think he would ever be that thoughtful, I have to be honest. So what, what's your favorite role you've done, apart from Biggs, obviously? My what's favorite your, role? Yeah. Well, any a, particular? a long time ago, there's another sad story. No, my, no I, uh, my favorite role was a Vietnam vet in a film in which I starred called uh, Some Kind of Hero. Now, that film, you will never know that I starred in it because there was another film came out called Some Kind of Hero. And it was with Richard Pryor. And uh, my film, uh, with a very nice cast, by the way, aside from me, uh, was totally lost. I, I mean, oh, nice. it's gone, it's gone. Um, but that was my favorite role because I was starring in it. It was a time when Vietnam deserters were very much in force, uh, very much a, a subject of... And, and, and anyway, um, but otherwise, uh, no, my favorite film to be in, uh, what I mentioned it this morning, was Spy Game, which uh, okay. I had a, a very bureaucratic role at the head of the CIA, but mm -hmm. it was just a very lovely atmosphere working with, with um, uh, Tony Scott and, and, and Robert Redford and so on. It was just a very nice, and I, I admired Tony Scott mm -hmm. and didn't meet Ridley, his brother, till many, many years later when I worked with him. But I loved uh, the atmosphere on that. Brilliant. Uh, just uh, jumping briefly back to, to Elstree 1976, and it's coming out uh, mm -hmm. next month, or this month, actually, I think. It's yes, coming out quite soon. Things. Yeah. Um, uh, how much were you guys involved in that? I mean... Well, I think we both had little bits. Okay. Really. Because um, it's focusing on, on ten of the it actors. Was, yeah, it was it. sold to us as sort of... It was a kind of affectionate little homage to what it was like being an actor in the 60s yep. and the 70s really and and um, so I, I suppose it uh, showed a, a little of what it was like mm -hmm. at the time and what our lives were like and what our lives are like now and, and the passage of time and what we've done and all the rest of it um, yeah so it was kind of interesting to do and yeah, I, I mean, I did a, a few bits and pieces down at home where I live in uh, in Dorset, and uh -huh. he came and did, did a few sequences down there. And I think Gary did the same in London at his his house. And I know Jeremy's done a bit, and Dave Prowse has done. Dave, yeah, Dave and, Prowse has done uh, some. Yeah, not in my my house. No, he, they what what they did is because uh, I direct audio books, and they came up, and I was directing um, an actor. Yeah, in in uh, Terry Pratchett's novel, mm -hmm. The Long War, and um, and and they came and filmed quite a bit of the time in the studio, which isn't in the film, which is unfortunate because it looks as though Paul and myself and Jeremy and so on aren't still working. And you know, it <laughs> seems as though we stopped after Star Wars, which yeah. is not the case. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't tiny part of our lives really but, but that's, that's um, why I was wondering kind of what it's through because you know it's called Elstree so yeah, like the, uh, the studio uh, I mean uh, so they obviously did concentrate on Star Wars yeah. because it's such a mega yeah. selling point from any anybody's point of view and um, 
Uh, and, and as Garrick's just said, I mean, our involvement in it uh, was one tiny part of, okay. of a life that was happening around about the 70s and the yeah. 80s. I mean, I, I then went off all around the world and did and worked in Hong Kong and other mm -hmm. places like that and then came back to England and worked in theatre for about 25, 30 years and did TV and all the usual bits yeah. and pieces, more movies. And so it, from that point of view, it, it's not a very accurate representation okay. of... Uh, of I suppose what it was like but then it would have been hard to have done a really in-depth unless you'd spent two or three hours on something and pretty boring actually mm -hmm. because uh, actors lives at the time were either 100 miles an hour or stop yeah you yeah. know and there was no in between either you were working constantly all the time or you uh, or you weren't or you were out of work and, and desperate to uh, to be finding some mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. But it has its its um, its moments, I think, and uh, certainly when I saw it, I enjoyed it. I thought there was lots of fascinating bits and pieces. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it and seeing what sort of angles they come at and what yeah. what we get unearthed and what is actually in the films. We should be quite good. And what they cut as well. <laughs> <laughs> what they leave in, they take out. You know, how uh, they're not credited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did they approach you for that? Then they they just phone you up and. Um, yeah, kind of like you guys, actually. They came up <laughs> to us at one of these and said, Brilliant. oh, we're doing this little thing. Do you mind doing it? And we actually thought it was just going to be a, 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 a small fan film. Okay. Um, but in fact, it's turned out to be a little bit bigger than yeah, because it's got an American production. release now for mm. over a, a, quite a few different... In fact, I was phoned two nights ago at Garrick's place uh, from a radio station in New York who wanted the a sort of a little bit of, of a heads up about it and they did a sort of 15-minute interview and I think they're going to do the same for you, aren't they, Garrick? Yeah, they, yeah. yeah. So it's turned out a little bit more... And I think, again, it's, it, it is the Star Wars element. It, Star yeah. Wars is such a massive thing yep. it's not just a movie it, anymore. It, it, it's, it's a social thing. and yeah. cultural thing so if you go to the ends of the earth in, in a language that you've never spoken before but mention those two words they will still know what yeah. you're talking yeah, about yeah. because it yeah. has this mega monolithic thing about it which is maybe good maybe bad I don't know only time will tell really. it's only going to get bigger I think yeah <laughs> <laughs> can it? Yes, can it? Will they put it on the new moonshots and uh, in the in the privatisation of the aeroplanes to Mars? In the <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Because I, I did, I read uh, for BBC uh, the Chris Hadfield uh, experience of being in the space station. Chris mm, Hadfield, yeah, yeah. The Canadian astronaut, yeah. and who was very articulate, and of course he sang. Um, uh, Space Odyssey. Yeah. But, yeah, he could have done the Star Wars theme. I, <laughs> I could have hum, told hum, him I was in another Canadian who happened to be in there. He never did that. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, Fair I think me. the least he could have done was dressed up as Greedo when he was singing. Well, forget Space Greedo. <laughs> well, I mean, he could, have, he could have had a little orange suit with a yeah. Yeah, little oh, flight suit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean to, to just focus on, on Star Wars, but how do you feel about Greedo like, extending what? beyond what was in the film to... Well, this is a question that's asked more and more these days. I mean, a long while ago, people were just kind of, you know, it's a small scene, that's it, it's finished, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of interesting character. Now they get, everybody sort of is interested... And I know there are books written yeah. about the characters mm. and, and Garrick mentioned... Comics and things as well, yeah. And the comics and how that was all expanded. But, uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm not a huge... I haven't followed the, the, the books or the, or, no, fair or enough, the comics. Yeah. Although I am a fan. I do like... I like sci-fi before Star Wars. Yeah. I was a fan then. I loved um, that earlier film that George made, the sci-fi film before Star Wars. Uh, yeah, THX, yeah, which I THX. really enjoyed. So I was a bit of a fan before all that happened, so I do enjoy it all, but I didn't kind of really get into mm -hmm. um, Greedo's expanded story. Yeah. And indeed, as far as the characters I've ever played in my life, um, <laughs> as, as I sort of mentioned earlier on today, you know, I... I by blowing my own trumpet, I played Swan in char in Marcel Proust's *A la Recherche du Temps Perdu*, <laughs> all twelve volumes. But the thing I'll be remembered for is for a green alien yeah. on my gravestone. Here lies Green. <laughs> he hey. shot first. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, he shot first. Yeah, but that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> That is pretty cool, I have to say. Um, well, have you got anything else? Oh, no, I know. No, just. Well, I think we'll. Uh, I think we'll say, guys. God, so we'll wind well, up. That's the extent yeah, of their universe. universe. Yeah. It's so narrow. <laughs> yeah, the universe <laughs> is narrow. But thanks, guys. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Pleasure. <laughs>